Hey, Baxter. What, man? I once tickled the pickled nipple of a little dog named Bickle. How long is this going to take? How long is what going to take? The show. What are you, retarded? Forever. This show will last forever if I wanted to. Well, forever isn't a real thing, so fuck you. Your face isn't a real forever, so I'm going to fuck you. What? Hey folks, Pastor Jay here from Know the Truth Ministries. Welcome to our show, The Christian Experience, or as I like to call it, my live call-in radio show, where through phone magic and this technology we call the internet, I can answer all of your prayers and any other questions that you may or may not have. Our goal here is to serve you so that you may find justification in sending us money, dick pics, and opinions we did not ask for. We are coming to you sort of live from a large yet humble trailer park in China Lake, California, which is located just outside of Death Valley. The local time is just a few minutes past midnight, and right now, I'm really focusing on the perception of my existence and the experience of the sensation at the top of my head. It's like I'm wearing a vibrating top hat and my body is wrapped comfortably in a vibrating blanket. I feel like I'm empty on the inside and that all experience is external. My neck is a spaghetti noodle. My head is limp. Wait, that can't be right. My neck is a skull. I'm in a vat of pudding. I am swimming in pudding I hear myself somewhere in there he's controlling what I say you can't tell me I'm wrong that's my brain energy giraffes are pimps do you know what a pimp is a pimp is a pope in a row I don't remember the question anymore And I'm not going to argue against somebody who thinks it's the first thing and not the second thing. That would be like worshiping a god and then eating it. Baxter, how in the hell are you doing tonight? Pretty damn good, if I may say so myself. I am high as fuck, and I have two large ripe pickled cucumbers laying on my desk just waiting to be deep-throated by me. What's been happening in your life lately? Um... It's been interesting. Yeah? Why is that? Well, for starters, I think everybody around town really, really likes me. Well, how so? It's it's like... Oh, have you ever heard of the term cat calling? Yeah, it's, it's like when you were trying to call a cat close enough to you so it's within range of your hunting rifle. Nope. That's called the murder of an innocent creature just so you can experience some type of euphoria because you were born with no feelings. What I'm talking about, it's when you're walking down a street through an alleyway or even down a pit road during a NASCAR race and everybody's eyes are on you and they're whistling and hooting and hollering and you can't help but just feel like a piece of meat. Oh, like what every woman on this planet goes through on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. Well, what about it? Baxter, it's been happening to me, and I have no idea why. This isn't something I noticed before, but the other day, I was walking to the 7-Eleven to get myself a few packs of nicotine gum, and along the way, it, it it's like it's like everybody climbed out from underneath their brothers and sisters and just started verbally attacking me. How so? Here, here, one, one second. Uh, amidst the mob that ended up surrounding me, uh, I was able to record some of what happened. Here, check this out. Hey, Pastor Jay, me and a couple friends want to give you our trinity. Hey, Pastor Jay, you want to participate in Don't Ask, Don't Tell? You have a real beautiful penis. I'd like to lick it a lot. How about you stick it somewhere in the pants area? Oh, oh, hey, Pastor Jay, what's going on? Wow, you look nice today. Um, I, I, I got... Uh, money for the donation. Let me just reach in my pants and really hold on. Let me almost got it. Almost. Okay. Almost got it. Just hold on. So wait. Hey. Here. It's a little sticky. Hey, Pastor Jay, how about you pretend I'm an altar boy and you show me your rectory? Hey, baby. If you were yogurt, 
Would you be fruit at the bottom or stirred? Hey, Pastor Jay, I want to fuck your spit-battered asshole. Psst. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You want to have the sex? Hey there, Pastor Jay. Can I put my host in your tabernacle? Hey, Pastor Jay, I want to nail you to the cross. And by cross, I mean my headboard. And by nail, I mean fuck. You like how that looks? <sighs> you smell like little boys. Hey, Pastor Jay, I'm going to fuck your ass till you're filled with the spirit. That collar looks real nice. It also looks real nice wrapped around my cock while your mouth is wrapped around my cock while I skull fuck your face until it bleeds. Jesus Christ, man. Right? And it got even worse. My mortal enemy and my biggest rival, Joey Lee Kirkman, he sent me a video doing the same thing. Baxter, I sent you the clip through Facebook Messenger. Can you play it real quick? Sure thing, sweetie pie. Go fuck yourself. Hey, Pastor Jay. I'm not the most attractive boy in the world. I have acne scars and a double chin. But I have a big old dick. Come see me, okay? Damn, you son of a bitch. What? I've lived here my whole life and nobody's given me that much attention. Now you show up. Not to mention the fact that you're just a visitor. And the whole damn town wants to fuck you. It's amazing how much power a fear monger and pastor can hold over a town, isn't it? Well, it could also be the fact that... I don't care. You asked what was happening in my life and I'm not done yet. Okie dokie. Where, where was I? Oh, Yes. So after about 30 minutes, I was able to successfully beat off this mob of catcalling perverts. And they disappeared just as quickly as they got to me. So yes, yeah, something's happening here, Baxter. I have no idea what it is. Um, I would give credit to my good looks, but we'll figure it out. And um, let me get on to the next part of my story. So once this crowd dispersed, I made my way to 7-Eleven, like I said before. Uh oh Who was that? Was that Asian man there? Yeah, that's Iwasaka. And God damn, I have issues with that guy. Well, he's still doing that teaching thing? Yeah, and it's getting worse. To let you listeners in on what's happening, this Japanese guy, Iwasaka, it's like something in that store is controlling him. On the surface, he seems fine, but it doesn't take more than a second before you get the sense that he knows about everything that isn't important to you. What makes things even more complicated is his drive to teach you about those things. The problem is, he doesn't speak a word of English while he's training you, and you end up stuck in a situation where he's irritated with you because you're irritated that he's given you instructions in Japanese on how to work a machine that you're not paid to work with and may, in fact, not even exist outside of that 7-Eleven. Here's the thing, though. He's only like this while he's inside that store. If you catch him anywhere else outside of that store, he speaks perfect English and will generally let you lead the conversation. So I walk into the 7-Eleven, excited about my nicotine gum, and Iwasaki was just standing by the doorway, as if expecting me. Without saying anything, he handed me an outdated manual to an even more outdated ice machine that sat in one corner of the store. We locked eyes for a moment, both of us unsure of what to do next. I knew the machine wasn't broken, and he was convinced otherwise. So I began to speak just to break the awkwardness of the situation, and of course, he interrupted me with what I can only guess were insults. I was so irritated by this point, Baxter. Well, yeah, I can only imagine. See, I knew the ice machine wasn't broken. In fact, nothing in the store is ever broken. To appease him, though, I walked over to the ice machine and performed a function test. I basically just opened the door to demonstrate that it was cold inside. Now... I wanted to scream at him for wasting my fucking time. I wanted my nicotine gum, and I wanted to burn this town to the ground. Except, it was then that I noticed the cries. I could tell by Iwasaka's frozen expression that he heard the cries too. Except, his face gave away the fact that he was more concerned with me discovering a secret that he didn't want to tell. I studied his expression for a moment until his shifty eyes gave me an excuse to look around at my surroundings. To my surprise, everything in the store was suddenly nothing but tiny cans of creamed corn. No drinks, no toilet paper, no cigarettes, no tampons, no nicotine gum, just tiny cans of creamed corn. The crying continued, and I pushed my way past Iwasaka and followed the sound of whatever it was that was crying. Soft patters of footsteps told me that my Japanese friend wasn't that far behind me. I followed the sound until I reached the door in the back of the store. 
Is the crying coming from behind this door? I asked. Hi. Excellent, Sensei, I said as I bowed towards him. I turned back to face the door and opened it with caution. In the middle of the room, on the floor, was a small glob of creamed corn. In the only way a glob of anything could, it was rocking back and forth and crying into its little glob hands. In front of it was an empty tin can where I can only assume this glob of creamed corn came from. For a second, I was amused. I like it when objects cry, but knowing better than to show my hand in this situation, I faked empathy. I may be a monster, but I'm smart enough to keep up appearances. I turned around to look at Iwasaka in one of his eyes. What can I do to help? I asked. How can I fix this? Teach me how to fix this. He smiled as if to say, This is what this has all been about, child. This is why I've been training you. It all leads up to this. Except the version that I got was in all Japanese. I turned back around to face my final test. A test that I wasn't prepared for. Slowly, I reached down and picked up my new little glob friend. He looked up at me with the cutest little eyes and asked, Are you my new friend? Can we be best friends? Of course, I replied. Always and forever. I almost choked on those last words. I knew I wasn't telling the truth. But I didn't want the last few minutes of my corn glob's little life to be filled with fear. I walked with him over to the microwave, placed him in it, and said, You want to play a fun game? Sure! I love games, especially with my new best friend. Okay, buddy, I'm going to close the door and push a few buttons. When I do, you're going to spin around in a circle. When that happens, start counting and see if you can count up to the number I pressed. If you guess right, the spinning thingy will stop at that number. Yippee! Well, I win, Pastor Jay. Without answering him, I shut the microwave door, set the timer to five minutes, hit the start button, and watched as my best friend spun around in a circle with the most sincere smile on his face. That smile faded quickly, though. His face turned to fear as he suddenly realized what I had done, and a scream escaped his lips as his skin started to boil. Like a chain reaction, all of the cans of cream corn in the store started to scream. They all knew what I had done. I looked over at Iwasaka. He was just as angry, and his pants were around his ankles. I had failed the final test. Except I didn't fail. The next day, I went back to the 7-Eleven. I forgot to purchase my pack of gum from the day before, and when I walked in, Iwasaka wouldn't even look at me. The most I got out of him was a grunt when I laid my money down on the counter. Folks, never again will I have to deal with him training me on shit I don't care about. Suck sass. God rest your soul, you little glob of cream corn. God rest your soul. And thank you for sacrificing yourself to my cause. Great story, Pastor Jay. By the way, I managed to grab a few cans of the cream corn before Iwasaki threw them out in trash. Oh, nice. I definitely have an appetite. Hey, what do you say, you and me, dinner date after the show? Hell yeah, man. Love our dinner dates. Yeah, I know. Any calls? Uh, yeah, we actually got a call from Brian. Oh, sweet. Uh, listeners, I need to inform all of you of something. Uh, Brian is the guy who's been calling in with cat facts. For those of you who've been listening since the beginning, you'll know who I'm talking about. We have come to an agreement See, his mother called us the other day, and she's been kind of concerned. Brian is a 23-year-old fifth-grade dropout. Before that, he was homeschooled by his parents. I didn't know about this till the other day when his mother called that this is his hobby. He loves facts. 
It's actually something he's dedicated his life to. This agreement that I mentioned a few seconds ago, basically Brian is going to be calling in with some cat facts to educate all of you listeners. And also his mother is going to be giving me money in exchange. So it's kind of like a win-win situation. So without further ado, uh, Brian, you're live on air. Thank you for subscribing to General Animal Facts. These animal facts have been brought to you by the Dollar General. Price check on aisle one, it's a dollar. General animal fact number one. If you give a tiny trombone to 76 ducklings, they will lead the most adorable parade you've ever seen. General animal fact. Flamingos are monogamous, except for Philip, that cheating bastard. Thank you for subscribing to General Animal Facts. Uh, Brian, I thought you were doing cat facts. What's going on? No, this is General Animal uh, Facts. But you're the cat facts guy. No, I don't even know any cat facts. I is your mother there? Can I talk to your mother? These mo General Animal Facts have been brought to you by the General Car Insurance. It's generally insurance. General Animal Fact America's first president, George Washington, was actually nine koalas stacked on top of each other. I don't think he was koalified. And I don't think that you're Brian. Are you Brian? N no. This is not Brian. Then who are you? General Animal Fact All barn owls think that one line in the Friends theme song is... I'll be there for you. Don't tell them the truth. It would devastate them. Pastor Jay, I think that's your son, Brian. Is it? I thought it was. No, seriously, Jay, this is not your son, Brian. <clears throat> Thank you for subscribing to General Cat Fact. Animal Facts. Animal Facts. Meerkats can control electronics with their minds. If your cell phone rings, do not answer it. It is one of our meerkats asking you for help. It will escape. And they were very persuasive. All right. Thank you very much, Brian, for these animal facts. Um, we're going to have to. General animal fact. Penguins appear to have tuxedos because they are slowly evolving into 1920s business tycoons. In 30 years, they'll have monocles. In 60 years, disdain for the poor. In 70 years, they'll vote for Trump. Okay. Uh, again, thank you very much, Brian. That was very insightful. I can't wait till you call back. Baxter, who do we have on next? This, this next call comes from a guy named James up in Oklahoma. All right, James, you are on air. How can I help you tonight? Hey, Pastor Jay. Hey, what's this up? This is uh, this is James. I'm just calling in to say, hey, I'm loving the show, man. It's great. Thanks. Especially, especially Baxter. But, you know, honestly, you really don't need to be a part of it. But What? Yeah, anyway, anyway. I was just curious about something, though. Uh, a couple episodes back, you were talking about the brain in the jar thing, man, and you just kind of left us hanging. That's uh, kind of a dick move. Uh, yeah. Would you be so kind as to maybe finish that story? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, I can do that. Just uh, you're going to have to take this call off air because it's going to take a second for me to explain it, all right? Hey, appreciate it. Yeah, later. no problem. Yep, later. First, I apologize for not wrapping things up there. See, my doctor prescribed me this new drug called Flux. It it messes not only with my memory, but also with my understanding of reality. To be honest, I, I don't think there was much more of that story that could have been told. I do remember that over in one corner of the room, there was a man standing there, and he was tethered to the brain in the jar. His name was Sai... Satan? No, no. It was Say Say Ten. Say Ten Bruggenkate. Bruggenkate. Say Say Ten Bruggenkate. I also remember that in front of that brain was a name placard with the name Matt Dillahunty written on it. When I asked the Satan fellow why the brain had a name attached to it, he simply stated that the brain Matt Dillahunty was essentially God and that we were all part of his reality. We live for the brain. We live to please the brain. We are projections of that brain. All right, hope that answered your question. Uh, Baxter, let's go on to our advertisement. 
<clears throat> is your asshole larger and blacker than the largest black hole in our universe? Do you get out of the shower and wonder, why me? When you sit on the carpet to watch your favorite episode of Saved by the Bell, do you leave spots? Try our new and improved melted bronze infused anal bleaching kit. It's edible, it's bronze, and it's bleach. We are proud to present our new product, Brown Out. Anal bleaching for Jesus. It's whiter than Jesus. It's more powerful than Jesus. And three out of ten priests say that it's holier than Jesus. Feeling a little more adventurous? Well, the Bible states that cleanliness is next to godliness. If you want to get two shades closer to God, simply repeat the instructions located in the 68-page manual included with our product. Either way, with a clean, puckered pink poop shoot, you couldn't possibly get any closer to God. Call us now before our distillery runs dry. We'll be waiting. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease and may, in fact, cause several or all diseases. Warning, dark-skinned individuals will not achieve a pale pink skin. Also, do not use this product on children, pets, amputees, the disabled, the elderly, or myself. Baxter, what's this link that you just sent me? Why are you sending me Amazon links now? Oh, if you clicked on them, you'd find out. I don't want to click on them. What are they, Baxter? God damn it. Those are just clicks to some of the reviews that our sponsor wants us to read on air. Oh, yes. Reviews. Who doesn't like reviews and five-star ratings? Let's see here. The first review. Okay, here we go. I got one. Okay, this first review is by a user named Ahaha. The title is, My Arse Was Like the Japanese Flag. I don't know what that means, but uh, here we go. It starts off, I put this on my chocolate starfish and decided to leave it on twice the recommended time as I wanted a nice white ring. After a few minutes, I could feel the temperature rising until I regressed back to my high school science class the day that the school prankster had a Bunsen burner to my arse. The temperature continued to rise, and I squatted down like a sumo wrestler going into battle, pulled my bum cheeks apart, stuck my head between my legs, and looked at the reflection of the offending ring piece in the mirror. Basically, all I could see for all intents and purposes was the Japanese flag. The bum cheeks had been bleached the purest white, whereas the sphincter was a perfect circle of glowing crimson. It felt as if someone sprayed a syringe full of napalm up my jacks. I turned my power shower on to full, cold turbo boost and did a handstand in the shower cabinet. The cooling waters flushed the offending product away. It was the one and only time I wished there was a gay snowman in the bathroom. After about a week, my Samantha Janus finally cooled down and I was left with the most perfect poop tube imaginable. Despite the pain and burning, I am giving this a 5 star rating as it leaves your dung funnel gleaming. Oh, that's a pretty accurate review. I like it. Uh, review number two. It, it looks like it's a two-star review, but from what I gather, it's a two-star review because a user was an idiot, I think. I don't think. But he, let me just read it. The title is, This is the Worst Teeth Whitener I Have Ever Used. I will give it two stars because it did admittedly turn my teeth white. However, the product burned my mouth quite severely and my lips have become very pale. Mm, Pastor Jay, I literally just got an email from Edgar. You might want to address it on the show. Uh, is it the recipe? Looks that way. Nice, folks. One of our neighbors, Edgar, he's an amaze balls cook. You can give him anything and he will find a way to cook it enough for safe consumption. As you all know, I hate chemtrails, and even though spraying vinegar in my backyard keeps me safe from airborne chemtrails, I have no way of protecting myself when it comes to the chemtrails in my food. So while sharing a bathroom stall with my friend the other day, I had a chance to rub heads together with him and he agreed to start emailing me recipes that would cater to my lifestyle. As a way of paying it forward, I will share these recipes with you fine folks. This uh, first recipe, I'm just going to do one for this episode. It, it calls for two parts mud mask, one part silver, one cup of cilantro, one cup of hand-picked wild mushrooms, and then you combine and cook this for 13 minutes, no more. Season with salt and pepper. And you can use this as a soup, soap, toothpaste, or a facial cream. Um, there are also two notes here. Note one, the mud mask or bentonite clay. It removes metals absorbed by chemtrails and is edible. Note two, oxygenated silver water removes bacteria and fungus, likely caused by vaccinated people. 
Okay. And the last part is, in summary, this will remove chemtrail metals and block them, plus it helps against vaccinated people. So, yeah, um, try this recipe at home, folks, and let me know what you think. And uh, if anybody else has any recipes, feel free to email them to me. We have time for one more caller. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm prepared for this, but uh, Baxter sent me a few notes here. Um, go ahead and put her on line, Baxter. Uh, who is this? This woman's name is Christy Winters. All right. Thanks, Baxter. Uh, caller, you are live. Uh, how can I help you today? Hi, Pastor Jay. My name is Christy, and I'm a feminist. And whoa, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Give us, give us one second, Christy. I need to talk to my colleague, Baxter. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can wait. Baxter, why did you put a feminist on air? I figured it'd be good for show ratings, Pastor Jay. I think this would be good for both of you. Oh, you better be right, man. Thank you for your call. We appreciate your business and the opportunity. Okay, Christy, you are back on air. What I was going to say was that I came across your video, and I just have to correct you on a few things when it comes to Jesus and women. Uh, whoa, 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 Christy, let me interrupt you one more time. Uh, go ahead. I've been taking online courses for the last 16 years on Jesus and women, so so I'm, I'm kind of an authority, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, so as I was saying, my point was that the very first people to learn of the empty tomb were women. The women went to the tomb probably because the male disciples were too hungover from drinking the night before. Are, are you trying to tell me that women don't drink and that they weren't capable of going to the tomb drunk and that maybe they could have opened the up? The other thing was Jesus came from a woman. So without women, God would not be possible. Yeah, but if it wasn't for God, a man who implanted Jesus into the woman, then... No, 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 wait, just let me finish. Okay. Just think about that. An all-powerful God, but without a woman to carry him. Jesus could never have been born. Yes, but again, God created the woman. God, being a man, created that woman. She was just a vessel. So thank you, Christy, for calling into our show. We're going to have to move on to other callers or possibly even end the show. Uh -huh. Well, it would have been a lot quicker without all the interruptions, but yes. thanks for taking my call. Of course. Okay. Hope you can correct those errors. Uh, Bye. No. Bye. Actually... Actually, you know what? Baxter is giving me the cue that it's time to end the show. So, folks, that's it for us tonight. You can reach us via email, Facebook, Twitter, Vines, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, Spreaker, Stitcher, and iTunes. When you search for us, just type in the search bar, Know the Truth. That's K-O-N-W, the T-R-U-T. Alternatively, you can just click on the links provided in the show notes and you will be directed to us via whatever platform you choose to use. Of course, for the purposes of the show, call our number at 512-956-8788 or 512-956-TRUT. Again, that's T-R-U-T, TRUT. The music for this podcast was written and produced by me, and you can find everything I've created over at alloststateofmind.com, all one word, or alloststateofmind.bandcamp.com. I'd like to give a special thanks to James Templeton for sharing his cream corn dream with me and to Edgar Watson for this week's recipe. I'd also like to thank Brian Zeigenhagen for voicing the voice of the cream corn. Of course, it would also be very remiss of me if I didn't give a shout out to all of you who choose to take the time out of your day to call our voicemail line and join us in our wackiness. You are what makes this show so special and funny. Lastly, to Jeremy Stevens and Jay Crowfoot, do you remember that time we all went skydiving? I didn't get the memo that we had to be fully clothed. Although, it must have been quite amusing watching the wind turn my micro penis into a tiny little helicopter as I fell to the earth. Was I supposed to even have a parachute on me? Anyway, as always, in a world of magic and make pretend, anything is possible. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Sleep easy.
It was the one and only time I wish there was a gay snowman. <laughs> It was the one and only time I wish there was a gay snowman in the. <laughs>